Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and for today's Tools Day, we're going to talk about one of those controversial tool brands. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so for today's video, we are actually gonna talk about a fest tool. Now, before you go and start making some hater comments in the comments down below about fest tool, because that's the way it always goes, uh, it seems like on the internet, whenever somebody uses fest tool, me included, you get the people over here that are saying fest tool is the best thing ever, and you've got these people who say, I would never spend that kind of money, it's overpriced and not worth it. Well, I'm here to say that you guys are probably both right. Fest Tool actually reached out to me. They had this new line of impact drill driver coming out, the TID-18 being the tool that we're gonna talk about today. They told me that their big push was that they knew that they were really far behind on their battery technology, their cordless tools, and they really wanted to make a push to improve that situation. Hence, they came out with this new impact driver and they, they saw my feed and they saw that I use an impact driver a lot, which I do. And so, hey, I'm a lucky guy. They sent me one at no cost, no conditions. I'm not getting paid to do this video. I'm actually doing this video because you guys have been watching me use this on the Cabin in the Woods build series and I've been using it a lot and I've been getting a lot of questions about it. So. This is why we're here and we're gonna talk about the TID-18 from Festool. This is a $350 kit, comes in the sustainer, two batteries, charger, and obviously the drill itself. One thing I'll say is that if you guys have been watching me for any amount of time and seen a lot of these tools days, one of the things I hate about tool manufacturers is they send their tools out in bags. I hate bags. I don't know why. I feel like I'm complaining, but I just love a good solid case. I loved it when all my Milwaukee tools came in cases. Some still do. Festool sends out their tools in these sustainers. They're stackable. They are just, they're really nice. I mean, I pay, I would pay, and I've told manufacturers, I would pay more money for my tool to come in a case. Is this overpriced? I don't think so. A Milwaukee impact kit, it's about $300. No case, just a bag. So at $350, I don't think it's that big of a deal if the tool delivers. So this tool is 18 volt brushless. It's a zero to 3200 RPM, has three speeds, so you don't you know, just go full speed all the time. And then you've also got your T mode, which is gonna give you, you know, supposedly more control when going in with fasteners so you don't over tighten something. Personally, I leave it in the, the highest speed possible. I want the most power possible. And then I want a drill that I can control. So I want something that is gonna have the variable speed trigger, obviously, which this does. And that's really the only mode I've been using this thing in. Other than that, that that's basically this tool in a nutshell, guys. But I figured that's not enough video. That's not probably enough to really give you guys. So I thought what we would do is we could probably talk about the comparison between this tool and some other tools. Uh, but just know that if you wanna just go ahead and do something else, I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a good drill. If you wanna stick around and see really, you know, some more in-depth thoughts, let's go ahead and get into that by talking about maybe the cost comparison, the speed, power, ergonomics, and maybe just a total package value between this and some other impacts. So what we've got here are four, what I would call premium impact drills. And, and I know you might be thinking maybe I'm crazy because there's this blue one over here, but just bear with me while we get into this. What I wanted to do was these are kind of the four that I've been using as of recent and talk about maybe five of the top you know, deciding factors on what I think is an attribute of the impact that should go into your decision making when purchasing. Cost, speed, power, ergonomics, and maybe like a total package of the brand that you're buying into. Now, as far as these drills go, the cheapest drill on this table is the Cobalt. It's 179 for the kit with batteries, which is a heck of a deal win. This is 219 bare tool, this is 199 bare tool, and this is about 140 bare tool. So you're getting a great value, okay? The, now let's go to criteria number two, speed. 
The fastest impact out here on this table is the Cobalt. And I'm just gonna say it, the most powerful impact out here is the Cobalt. Now you may be saying to yourself, okay Kyle, you just said it's the cheapest, fastest, most powerful impact that you have here. Why don't you use it all the time? And that's gonna lead us into point number four and point number five, because all you really have to do is use this for an extended period of time and you're gonna bring up point number four, which is ergonomics, okay? Now I want you guys just to look at these impacts. Look at the handles, look at the grips. They're all very different, okay? If we were just going on speed, power, cost, I wouldn't even get into this. I would just use the Cobalt. But when you put your hand on the grips of all these different drivers, they all have a different feel. When you carry them in your belt all day, they wear on you differently. When you have to work above your head all day, they do different um, you know, damage to your shoulder. When you use them, they all have different sounds, okay? So it doesn't just boil down to the power and the cost of a tool to determine what is the best, okay? Ergonomics to me are just about the most important thing that you should be looking into when using or purchasing a tool. And I think that a lot of that comes with a little bit of use, right? So you can't just put a tool in your hand in a store and use it. And this is, you know, everybody I've talked to, they have kind of the same feelings. When you put your hand around these tools, you kind of start to feel one feels better than the other. It's such a subjective thing. So, you know, when people email me, they message me, they put comments in my YouTube and they say, but what's the best, Kyle? I don't know. I mean, I can't really tell you. But what I can say is that when it comes to ergonomics, ergonomics, okay, the full day's use in my tool belt, I'm always gonna grab the Metabo, or I should say, I've always grabbed the Metabo because even though it's not as fast as the Gen 3 Milwaukee, it's not as small as the Gen 3 Milwaukee, it just felt a lot better and it, it just worked really well. The Fest tool got sent to me and I found myself grabbing it even more than the triple hammer. Now Greg loved that because he likes the triple hammer and it gave him the ability to keep grabbing my triple hammer. But the Fest tool has an amazing ergonomic and I don't know if that's what you're really paying for, if that's what is you know in the, you know I don't know if I drank the green Kool-Aid and that's why I'm saying this, uh, but it's very ergonomic. It's not the most powerful. These three are definitely more powerful. Any of these would be faster. It's not the cheapest. In fact, it's the most expensive out here, but it is definitely the most ergonomic. Now, that's all subjective, okay? Criteria number five is the brand package, right? And what I mean by that is, if you're gonna go out and buy this Cobalt, because you don't care about ergonomics, all you want is the most powerful, fastest, cheapest impact, are you gonna go out and buy all the other Cobalt tools so that you have a battery platform that you can use on all your tools? I don't know. I mean, I've not used a ton of their other tools. What I have done is I've used a lot of Milwaukee and I've used a lot of Multivolt Metabo, formerly Hitachi, tools. So when I grab this tool, it's not a big deal. I, I know I've got another tool that I can just swap this battery out for. If you don't own any Fest tools, you might be a little reluctant to go and buy the TID-18, even if you say, man, I really trust Kyle and he says he loves it and I really would like to try it. That's just a tough sale. So the fifth criteria is, is kind of the big picture. And in the end, guys, it doesn't really matter that much. If you use any of these, you're gonna be able to do your job just as well, I promise. But if you're looking for the most refined feeling uh, total package, that's where you have to look at all the different criteria, not just speed, power, or cost. So what's really the point of this video? I feel like I just kind of talked a lot because I did. If you guys want to see me drive, you know, a 12 inch fastener and compare it, I do a lot of that on the build series video. So, you know, you can see me driving these things in probably in 10 different videos. I feel like that's just kind of superfluous, right? It just doesn't matter. It's just fluff content. What I wanted to do was answer a lot of the questions and the main one being, is it any good? Is the TID-18 any good? And my answer is yes. Is it the cheapest? No, this is. Is it the fastest? No, this is. Is it the most powerful? No, this is. 
but I won't grab this drill if I have the option of using any of these drills. I won't even grab this one most of the time. It doesn't even stay in my trailer. It stays here at the shop because at the end of the day, guys, I am working nine, 10 hour days. This is attached to my belt almost all day, every day. And I want something that feels good. And Festool did a phenomenal job. I still love this. The multivolt is probably what I would recommend most people to go out and get. Why? Because I think for most carpenters, Metabo has a full line of carpentry tools. Yes, Festool does as well, but let's be honest, most people just don't wanna spend that kind of money. Even though this is comparable in cost to a premium big name brand out there for a kit, I don't think people are gonna to want to dive into Festool just for an impact. Me, I'm lucky, they sent it to me. And I'm gonna continue to use it because it really just feels good in my hand. Uh, and that is the point. There's a lot of great tools out there, but it's more than just how fast something is. And that's what people always seem to wanna to know. So that is a quick, I don't think it was quick. That seems like a really long answer to the question, is the TID-18 any good? Yes. It's great, I love it. I'm gonna to continue to use it. Now, for all of you out there that just wanna see some drilling and some screwing, let's go ahead and do that and we'll catch you guys on the next video.